All right, welcome back. You're watching Sokoni here on Morning Prime. Yes, yes, now, Nairobi is the highest consumer of electrical energy, utilizing 2,293.95 gigawatts, which is 44.07% of the country's total energy consumption, according to the Energy and Petroleum Statistics Report for the 2023-2024 financial year. We have, of course, the Nairobi region standing out with its dense concentration of large and medium industries, micro and small enterprises, making it the commercial hub of both the country and the East African community region. The coast region ranked second in energy consumption, utilizing 930.05 gigawatts, which is constituted 17 uh, at 17.87 percent of the country's total energy consumption, the Rift Valley region accounted for 13.55 percent of the total consumption, utilizing 705.43 gigawatts of electrical energy, followed by northeastern and Mount Kenya region, contributing 10.78 and 6.47 to the overall consumption, respectively. West Kenya and South Nyanza regions reported the lowest consumption percentages representing 5.35% and 1.92% of the consumption. Oh. All right, this tells us that, of course, electricity demands in Kenya could exceed the generation capacity by 2027 unless production increases to catch up with the usage and avert power shortages that might lead to load shedding and rationing. The International Energy Agency, that is IEA, projects that the electricity demand growth rate will accelerate to an average of 5.7% between 2024 and 2026, meaning that Kenyans could consume more than 13,000 40, that is 55 gigawatts hours by 2027. This will outpace the growth rate of electrical energy generation set to slow down after Kenya changed its policy on buying electricity from independent power producers last year. This means that demand could exceed the electrical energy generation capacity, as I've mentioned. And we just want to put this into perspective, given what we've had, uh, the statistics that we have so far and where we are at, very interesting generation um, or development that we do have, especially when it comes to outsourcing uh, power, because looking at what we had also on the front page of the Business Daily yesterday, on generation up by 60% as more firms dump Kenya power, April licenses new 168 megawatts power plants, solar the most preferred alternative. I just want us to discuss about this because when you look also in today's business daily we have CEOs almost 20 percent of CEOs now who are sending workers home because of the cost of power amidst other of course production cost and we can see they cannot put up with the current cost of living as well Patrick let's just begin with you with this latest development and uh, given the statistics there and where we are headed by 2027 if the government has slowed also on the infrastructure of energy, what does it portend, especially for the business community? I think what you're finding here is about, uh, it, it's a reflection of the reality in the country. The distribution that you've seen is driven by the large power consumers. And if you look at them, uh, in, in that distribution, Nairobi, Mombasa, and then you go to Rift and, also, and so forth, just count the number of cement companies that are in those areas. And there, there you will find that that is the biggest demand um, in the in, you know, generator. So if you look around the Nairobi area and you look at the river, the number of cement companies that there are there, and also in the wider Nairobi area is large. And then you look at the number of budgeting, um, you know, uh, cement factories around uh, in the rift. You know, Nakura, I think, now has two, and then this um, Samtech was opened up recently. You have Bamburi and, uh, and uh, Mombasa Cement at the coast. So they're the biggest drivers of consumption. Mm -hmm. The other big consumer in the country is actually Kenya Pipeline Company. Mm -hmm. They also consume a lot of power across their infrastructure. And you find that when you look at the various counties that, that you've talked about, KPC is prominent in each of those counties as well. So it's not actually showing... Um, 
a growth in the economy. I think it, what it is showing is that a lot of these companies are expanding and therefore the consumption of power is going up mm -hmm. in those areas. And that is balanced out by what you just said, which is that a lot of people are moving over to solar. If you look at the medium-sized companies now and you go to their car parks and you go to their buildings, you'll find solar panels on top of most of those areas. And they are moving to that because, one, the problem is reliability of power. Kenya power has become very, very unreliable in terms of the distribution network. Um, it's not the generation, it's a distribution network that is very, very weak. And uh, the minute anything happens, um, you're out. And I think the, you know, the biggest joke in the country is, you know, whenever it rains and you need power, that's when the power goes. Um, and this is across the whole country. Um, and so when you talk about that power, you know, needing more power in the future, most of that is going to be own sourced power. A lot of companies are actually now changing over to supplying as much as they can through solar. Um, Devki, which has just recently opened up in, uh, in, 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 um, in Pokot, their plant in Atiriba has got a large amount of solar panels on the roofs. So they only, it's only the, what they call the reactive power that they get from the, from the grid, but the non-reactive power is all being generated by solar. And so if Kenya power doesn't change their efficiencies, yeah, and um, unfortunately, EPRA um, upped the losses that they're allowed, mm -hmm. uh, I think, two years ago, yeah, from something like about 15% to about 19, 20%. Currently, they're operating at about 23, 24%, which means that a quarter of the power that they buy mm -hmm. does not reach the customer. And it's, it is lost somewhere in their system, either through um, non revenue, um, non revenue loss where people are stealing the power or through inefficiency in the distribution system. So until that is sorted out, you're going to find there's going to be a move to um, captive generation in each particular organization. Mm -hmm. And you're finding, um, you know, um, a couple of places that I'm involved in. We are looking at, at, at sort of mini grids um, for, the, for, for the residences, the, the residential associations, because it makes sense. Um, say, for example, you, you're living in somewhere like Buruburu, and you get all those, all those um, roofs and you connect them together into a kind of a mini power station, you'll be able to service that, that, um, th that uh, estate with the, cap the power that they can generate um, and for whatever they use in that particular place. Most of them are using it for cooking. They're not using it for very high, you know, very high power consumption items. They're not using it for welding or industrial purposes. Mm -hmm. So the solar can be amortized very quickly for those people. And after five to six years, you're getting free electricity. So there's a lot of people coming in offering those kind of solutions and that is where you're seeing that number of people using solar is going up and until the distribution system to the retail consumer like me and you is improved i think um kenya power is going to have a big big problem and what you're seeing as well is that a lot of the solar generation is actually very easy you can stick it in one place and supply your people locally mm -hmm. so the issue of unbundling the distribution of power as well, which is going through parliament, I believe, at the moment, yes. where they want to cut down and allow people to distribute, is really going to put Kenya Power at, um, at a disadvantage, but also I think it's going to challenge them to improve their efficiencies. Because uh, why shouldn't I put up a solar power plant in Siaya and supply the whole of Siaya County? Because there are no major industries there, and all you need is that one major thing coming in to supply the industrial park. And you tell Kenya Power, supply those industrial park, and they will become a wheeler, right? So they're wheeling power from one place to another. Mm -hmm. So at Sierra Industrial Park, I will buy my energy from, Ke from, uh, from um, Kengen, which is generating using um, geothermal. And then I pay Kenya Power a small amount of money to bring it all the way to Sierra. Can you see where you're going? Mm -hmm. That is really, I think, what the challenge that we're going to have. But I believe that that's the way the country is going. And if it goes that way, we're going to have a lot more uh, efficiency in terms of the power distributors in this country. Mm -hmm. So I think that that changing landscape, the, the start where they unbundled the old East African Power and Lighting Company, which used to do everything, and they're unbundling them slowly, I think that further unbundling of the distribution is going to give us more efficiencies. And yes, when that happens, we will probably see cheaper power for 
for uh, for investors and then investors will come to this country all right i just want to follow through with the question of uh, also epra because uh, there is this fear interpretation from EPRA that we are going to have a mass exit from, uh, from the grid right now as people now opt for own generation of power with, with solar. And I don't know, I had written it. I was trying to find that particular article that uh, had indicated that there are going to be stiff measures on how people are going to move out uh, from, you know, the power generation that is coming from, uh, or the power distribution of Ke from Kenya Power to own generation of power by, yeah. by solar how, how will that really work out if we can see most of the farms right now are doing this as the CS had indicated that uh, I don't know if it's going to be punitive or there's some law around it that what, will, what, yeah. yeah you can clarify what has happened is that they're lowering the threshold of licensing for solar generation okay yeah on power generation I think it used to be something like about two megawatts or something like that or and they're bringing it down to half a megawatt Right? So that means that any, you know, e even, you know, a small company has to get a license from EPRA for them to put, to install their own solar generation. Um, I think EPRA is trying to protect Kenya Power um, from that point of view. Um, in a lot of countries, you, you don't need to be licensed. All you need to do is just to put it up and make sure that you meet the regulations. You don't get a license, but you meet the regulations um, on, on, on putting solar up. So I think you know, the, the issue of coming down and bringing it down to, you know, bringing down the licensing as a power generator, which I think is, 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 is becoming crazy. Yeah. If I own a small factory and I want to use maybe half a megawatt of solar, I'm not a power generator. I'm just a consumer who is being smart about what I'm doing. Okay. But they want to bring that kind of person into the ambit of being a power generator. And I think that is disingenuous by, by EPRA. Mm -hmm. What they need to do is just to put down the regulations that you need to meet in order to do that. And when you, when you meet that, you just go, go ahead. And all they do is that if, if somebody complains about you not meeting the regulations, they come and hammer you and they, and they whatever it is and they, um, and they fine you. But to say that you have to go and apply for the generation license, then it's got to go for public participation. So that's and you go for whatever so it is. It's <laughs> dead hand of the bureaucracy to just try yeah. and frustrate Kenyans. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. But let, let's see. How is this? Because we can see also we were, we were importing at, at least 18% uh, from Uganda, yeah. right? The, they were saying Kenya power imports from Uganda rise 18% in January on high demand. Uh, it seems this is going to be a, a big, big problem moving ahead, as you said. Owing to the fact that the government also has slowed on development, especially on infrastructure. Let's hear from uh, uh, Kiprono Kitoni. Um, <clears throat> uh, Debal, I think this conversation on energy is very, very interesting uh, for many reasons. We don't have to go far. If we go to South Africa and see what um, failing to plan your energy sector can do to a nation, then we can, the, the, you know, we have an example right there. And um, I think for me, Kenya has done fairly well. And uh, we need to just do one more Thing, which is to de-risk and to depoliticize the energy sector. If we look at the way the industry is structured today, from the regulator EPRA um, to the production companies, Kenjin and the IPPs, who then pass on the energy, the, 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 the produced power to Ketraco, who then uh, you know does the transmission of the power, you know, and just, uh, across from wherever it is from the source to the consumer. Then you go to the distribution companies, that is the Kenya Powers of, of this world. From the Kenya Powers of this world, you go then to the consumer. The country has made many promises to the consumer, both industrial and private consumers. And uh, the reality of the matter is that many of those promises have not been fulfilled. And we need to ask ourselves why. I mean, many industrial producers today are still paying up to 18 to 20 dollar cents per kilowatt hour. Mm -hmm. Let's look at this thing, contextualize it from a regional standpoint. You talked about Uganda. Yes. But let's look at the Renaissance Dam in Ethiopia. Ethiopia, yes. Who are going to produce at 3 to 4 dollar cents per kilowatt hour. If they are able to remit, transmit that to Kenya at two or three and land it here at five or six, they are still much, much more competitive than, they are, than our own renewable energy sources. So we need to start to look, one, at the most viable sources. Two, we need to look at the benefits that we can derive from our, the very, very good uh, renewable energy credentials that we have as a country. And that also has you know, other benefits like the, uh, being able to access climate action fund and etc. And we also start to need to look at uh, some of the mistakes that have been made to ensure that they don't happen once again. Mm -hmm. If we look at, for example, the 2017 election, um, we know very well that the Jubilee um, administration then 
uh, executed what they called the last mile program where they went and lit all the homes in rural Kenya. And we know the impairment that had on the, on the distribution company Kenya Power. It was in the billions of shillings, I think 17 or 18 billion shillings, mm -hmm. that was just passed on to a, a limited liability company that is listed in the stock exchange that has to be borne by that company for political expediency. When the country, uh, when, when the government was re-elected in 2017, you know, the company was left, you know, holding the baby. So I strongly believe that one of the ways, you know, we need to, what we, should, we need to look at how we can de-risk and we can depoliticize. And that is why we have been arguing with the, and, and encouraging these governments to look at listing more of these agencies of, uh, of government that are involved in critical infrastructural deployment. For example, we have been asking that for Kenya Pipeline to be listed because listing them will make them much, much better governed, much less access, uh, much less uh, manipulatable from a political standpoint mm -hmm. and able to last into the longer term and, and actually fulfill their mandate. So if we look at it from an industrial standpoint, for example, Kenya has lost out big time. We haven't been able to, you know, build our industry as much as we could. If we look at the balance of trade between Kenya and Uganda, in the year 2000, the balance of trade was 19 to 1 in favor of Kenya. In the year 2019, there was a surplus of trade from Uganda to Kenya. And it, that is almost, it, it's, it's crazy because you see, if you look at it, we are all using um, fossil fuel imported through the port of Mombasa. How is it then that they are more price competitive in their consumer goods and etc. than we are today? So there, there must be something along the way where we're losing out on efficiency. So I strongly believe that we need to look at, focus on how we can deal with the costs, how we can focus on availability and reliability and to create, you know, rational um, access points to power. I'm building a home in rural Kenya today and I, and I have agricultural activity in Transoya. And I'm trying to move, uh, to get Kenya Power to come and store power in one of my facilities. They're asking that for me to access power, mm -hmm. I need to pay them 1.7 million shillings for a very small in the rural, rural mm -hmm. industry. And I say, look, why, why would I need to do that if I could access solar power? So actually for me, I think it is good that they're reducing the threshold, as Patrick has said, because it gives Kenyans more access to, to cheaper power. But then again, it is to the expense of these agencies that have been in existence for a long time. They'll be unable to conduct their activities if they don't reduce their costs to become more rational to reflect the times that we are in. But let's look at uh, the status of, uh, of Kenya Power. I know, Patrick, you, you're stepping out uh, for a moment. Uh, and I, I want to just ask the question. Uh, you said it is good that they're, they're, they're reducing Reduce the threshold. The threshold yes. is, is that good or is that... Because I, I thought that is making it a bit punitive. No, I, th I think... What it had. What is happening, it, 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 it's a double thing. I think the level is what has to be looked at, right? You need more people to have license to generate for the public, right? So what is the economically, uh, what's the economic size for generation for the public is five megawatts and above. All right, but right? this is for the power um, yeah. people. Power generation. Yeah. But yeah. for individuals, for individuals like, uh, like yeah, Cape yeah. here, whom might want to put his own thing, that licensing by April I don't think is right. Um, because you should be able to say, right, I want one megawatt or half a megawatt, and he goes ahead and negotiates with, you know, there's a lot of financing for green power in this world. Yeah. And he can go and negotiate with, with a bank, um, with all this green funding that is there, and get very ch even cheaper power because it is green for his farm, right? And that really is what Kenya Power will be, uh, will be competing against. And they have to recognize that that, that kind of thing is, is, is a feature in this country. So that, that's why I think I, in terms of bringing that thing down, I don't think it should happen. It should allow people like him to, you know, to, put, to be able to negotiate and put their own power station or you know, power generator in, in their place. Um, and those, those, um, you know, those, those offers in terms of investment are very, very attractive at the moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Okay, uh, Patrick, I'll release you for a moment. Uh, you step into a meeting. But I wanted just to follow up on the status of uh, Kenya Power, yeah. knowing that they are in a financial loss-making uh, streak right now, as we can, we can, as we speak, we can see debt being paid uh, to Ketraco. I mean, their financial book are not, are not looking very good as it is right now. You say that this should be a consideration of KPLC being or KP as it stands right now to be listed on Nairobi Security Exchange. Do you yeah, think KPLC it is? is already listed. Is, yes. is already. Uh, it's just that the shares uh, were suspended because of the, at some point because of the, the you know, the commercials. The company 
And if you look at the history of Kenya Power and Light, I mean, there is absolutely no reason why that company should be making a loss. Absolutely zero reason. The only reason why it makes a loss is because it is uh, primarily government controlled and can be used for expediency as and when it is required. I mean, I don't think uh, a comprehensive report was ever submitted of what the last mile project cost and who bore that cost. I don't know, uh, Bernard, uh, Bernard, Oliver Bunyasi, if ever it was discussed in Parliament during your time. But then the reality of the matter is that the company took a huge impairment. And that impairment continues to dog its financial capability to this day. But if you think about it, Kenya Power is collecting energy, it's collecting power from Kenjin and on distributing it. Uh, it's got a long experience in doing so. And, and, and it has got to um, existing bureaucracy and limited liability, a, a company that has been in existence for a long time. But the reality is that there is nothing fundamentally wrong with Kenya Power. But then it has just not been allowed to do the business for which it exists to do. And it is for that reason that I argue that we need to get more of these state agencies to list. Um, I was very happy to see the president recently, you know, crack the whip on loss-making state enterprises. But again, many of these state enterprises that make losses don't make losses because they set out to do so. But then in the course of their doing business, I mean, look what happened to KNTC recently. I mean, mm. and, and that fiasco. I mean, if it was a company owned uh, were listed on the exchange. I mean, the shareholders would be holding, bearing the brunt of decisions that were not taken for purely commercial purposes. Yes. Yeah, so I, I, I strongly believe myself that we need to look at the inherent efficiencies in that industry and across the value chain to ensure, first of all, that we are able to attract, attract sizable industrial users. You know, Kenya today, we are, there's just a few actors, perhaps in the cement industry, who are setting up industry. But many of them are unable to come and do business here for two reasons. One is the cost of energy, two is the cost of land. So I'm glad to see that at least some steps have been taken, uh, like Kenyan recently has introduced a green energy park in Naivasha, where they're going to have a, an economic zone with attracting industry that will be able to use power with, with almost zero transmission costs, because it will be at, right in Olkaria, right next to the production of, uh, of geothermal uh, energy source. So, you know, we need to think creatively outside the box to take advantage of our competitive ad advantages. Otherwise, the Renaissance Dam, what's going on in Uganda mm -hmm. with the with Bojagali and other uh, huge production facilities of energy like that, we'll take, we'll have our lunch and we'll be left wondering what happened and industry has moved away from us. <laughs> All right, let us hear from Professor Iraqi. It's interesting what uh, Kitoni is saying. If you go to Kampala today or if you go to Kigari, and you compare that 10 years ago, you see a lot of industries coming up in both countries or in both cities. And probably one attraction is cheap, cheap power. But get back to our business. I recently visited uh, my bank, not that I own it, but I bank there. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things I noted at the parking is that it looks different. Until I checked and realized that now if you go to park there, the car has a shed. And I was wondering, why is the bank so good in giving us shares for our cars? Mm -hmm. Until you discover that all those shares are actually solar panels on top. So you, you get a parking for the cars, and on top you put a solar panel. So, and everybody is now looking for a solar panel for a very simple reason, that people are looking for cheap power. Not just industrially, but even in your own home, power has become expensive. And people are rational. They not just sit and complain about power. They look for something to do. And one of them is moving to cheaper power, which happens to be solar. So what the government should be doing, or Kenya, or the regulator should be doing, is to make it easier for you to generate own power, not stopping you. Because at the end of the day, if I save some money in power generation or in power, I don't keep that money in the pocket. I use it also, I shift it elsewhere. So the whole economy benefits. If you look at the data you gave there, there's a clear, there's a clear connection between urbanization and power consumption. There's a connection between economic growth and power consumption. So. When we deny people power, we deny them an opportunity to, to improve their, their, state, their, their, their economic status. Look at something like as simple as information. When you get power in the house, you can get internet, you can use machines, you can do so many things. And that improves your status. My biggest concern is by 2027, you are saying the demand will outstrip supply. And the, the consequence from an economic point of view is that the price will go up. Already is up. So what we need to be doing now is to encourage people to produce more power. It could be from geothermal. We talked about brine from geothermal wells. It could be hydro. 
and I see no reason why this much dreamed about Africa grid network should not come into being. So that we can get power from Uganda, we can get power from Zambia, we can get power from Igadam in DRC, after all is now a member of the South African community, where we talk about nuclear power. So let's make sure that at no time will the will supply be, be more than demand, because that has political consequences. One of the things that annoys me any time we sit in this forum, and some of you are business people here, who can tolerate a loss of 23% in your business? Kenya Power loses 23% and we see that's not a problem. So if Kenya Power focused on reducing that waste to something like 10% or 5%, it would be profitable. So we are talking about people who are not connected <coughs> to power. At the same time, we are talking about loss, about losses. So is it technologically impossible to reduce the power that Kenya is losing or Kenya Power is losing? It's possible. But I think the ultimate solution, in my opinion, is to bring more competition in the power sector. Generation, transmission, and distribution. My dream has always been very simple. Kenya Power, or whoever is dis distributing power, could be Kenya Power, whoever it is, should have an auction. So they buy power from the cheapest producer. Is it solar? Is it hydro? Is it Uganda? Is it... Because uh, as a consumer, I don't care where power, power comes from. I want cheap power. So once we inject competition into the power sector, I see no reason why we are not going to produce more, why the price, the price is not going to go down, and why everybody in this country is not going to benefit from cheaper power and industrialization. And finally, I think we need to demystify power. I don't know why we think that uh, getting, getting connected to power is a waiver. I see politicians going to villages and say, we are going to connect you to power. We are going to connect you to roads. I think uh, the stage this country has reached economically we must realize that power is dispensable. It should not be a vapor. It, it should be just like air. And it should not be based on politics, but economic reality. Mm -hmm. All right, mm. Well, I think the power market is a bit murky. I think it's one area where we need uh, <coughs> a lot more open analysis. Uh, and especially uh, in the most developing countries, governments tend to have a big hand in power, various aspects of power, generation, distribution, like we have in Kenya. You know, we, all you have to do is, done is set up public companies uh, in these various segments uh, with the state taking an active interest. We are still um, uh, a typical user, a household user, for example, in rural Kenya. It still has got difficulty. You're still getting crazy quotations uh, to get connected to power that you have to pay up front uh, to the power company. Um, and I think that's a matter that should really be addressed. Mm -hmm. One, we should introduce competition in the generation of power. Uh, two, we should introduce competition in the distribution of power. Uh, and uh, number three, we should introduce competition in this, the choices in the selection of which power source you would want to have. You should, once you're informed about um, uh, how much it would cost for a particular power source, you can specify that power source as the one that you want to connect to. And it's the totality of those demands that then uh, will go back into the system, uh, push back into the system, and would allow distribution in accordance with those demands of the final, um, uh, final users. I think it is intolerable uh, for Kenya Power to be having a, a, a sort of some gray areas where you do not know exactly where the power has gone. Uh, out of the 23 that um, uh, uh, my colleague Pono here mentioned, the, some of it is accounted for, the other one is sort of, it's like it's gotten into some swamp, it's, it's a river flowing into the lake, passes through the swamp and you can't find it anymore. Uh, this is only because we are allowing, uh, uh, we are allowing uh, the visible hand there to, to, to pinch out, out of the uh, power supply system. Um, we have got infrastructure that's dilapidated, that is not been uh, upgraded. Uh, for example, uh, in my home county in Busia, our power comes from uh, somewhere in Nyanza, where we have the big power station, I think, in uh, Rangala. Um, and uh, engineers are saying, hey, this, it looks like they get the worst of, uh, uh, of the engineering services, so to say. They are, uh, uh, they are old, they are not being upgraded, and so on. I guess uh, that is is a loss that I, uh, the rest of the system seems to be able to take quite comfortably. 
I think we should allow the power sector to be exposed a little bit more so they can seek efficiencies from, uh, uh, from within. Um, uh, they, I don't know how many hours in a week, typically, I'm off the grid. I have some solar power and I, have, I rely largely on the grid. But typically you get like um, maybe 10 hours in a week uh, that you have power, if you're lucky, that would be about two hours a day. The rest of it, you're off. You're off at the most critical times. So we must get out of those uh, um, uh, interruptions that are not helping. There is a huge demand for power for household use. It is from that that then people graduate. I see there's a lot of welding that's being done now in local villages. Um, there's still um, milling operations that are being done by uh, fossil fuel. When it could have gone on to, uh, on to power, they're cleaner. Uh, and there are many, many conversions that would occur. They can't happen now because of, uh, uh, of the, uh, in the, in the, uh, the crooked market, I would say, that we have. Kenya Power has still got a disproportionate uh, say in the rural electrification by alternative um, uh, sources. For example, on the solar side, I uh, had uh, um, uh, an, NG an international NGO uh, that uh, was supplying power in parts of Abusia, uh, solar power. They would harness solar power and set up stations and actually uh, provide households on a build basis. And they were cheaper, much cheaper, and more reliable and more dependable. But for them to set up, to expand, they needed the authority, express authority of Kenya Power and Lighting. That, that shocked me. And uh, to the extent where at one time they had equipment lying in Mombasa and were not getting, they had not got the authority from KPLC, so they wouldn't get the uh, uh, authority to import the machinery that they wanted to bring in. I think we should really liberalize that side of things and, and, and let the system give us a new equilibrium, give us a new system, not, not one that's dependent um, on who, who, who's going to make money, why and, and what. And I think it's too much of that that we need to clean out. But I think also because of the infiltration of so much of uh, solar panels, some of them are really wanting, uh, it could be also the lithium batteries as well, uh, there is a new levy, no, no, new legislation that is on the floor of the National Assembly or it's, it's being put up uh, by EPRA to try and regulate this, that now for any systems that are coming, any those power grids that are coming into the country, at least they can last for around five years or beyond. Anything that now will not be lasting for five years, that should not be coming into the market. To... So it is tighter also maybe on security, uh, on, on issues of, of quality and uh, yes. having all these counterfeits in the market that uh, the, it's in but let us start with the yeah. government side, eh? uh, the, the, the side that's controlled a lot by government. Right now, to get transformers of quality is a big issue. Um, I, when I was a member of parliament, I remember uh, the, we got something like maybe 40 transformers in a period of 10 years. Out of those, probably 30 were not working. They're installed and somehow they light up a bulb and after that it's gone. It's gone off. Now we were told, well, um, well, maybe it was because they were faulty, or oh, well, it was the procurement, or oh, well, and you never get any, any clarity. That's right in the, in, in the bedrooms of government. So before they begin worrying about the quality out there on the market, they should demonstrate this also. With, yeah. Yeah. And usually they're using that like we do in trade, uh, non-tariff barriers. You know, you sort of, uh, you can institute a phytosanitary standard in a health standard of some kind uh, to, to bar somebody's uh, inflow of goods into the market uh, to give advantage to one side to one side of it. So I would hope that if they are going for quality, that it's going to be across the board, and even government is subjected to that quality standard that they should have. Uh, it's it, it's it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. All right. Uh, just looking at the status of, of uh, the books as well, I wanted just to ask uh, if Kenya Power is a monopoly. Of course, there's a default of maybe also the consumers not really paying up uh, their debts. That is really standing out at 35 billion shillings as, as it is. Why would Kenya power be in financial distress? You know, I think for me... Uh, Being I, a monopoly. I wouldn't want to, to speak about something that I haven't... You know, I wish we, I knew that that was going to be the conversation now, but I probably have come in with an, ex an, an expert opinion on it. But um, in my opinion, I think the best solution for Kenya power is that needs to be de-risked, needs to be depoliticized. 
um, it needs to be free from um, decisions that are not taken on a purely commercial basis. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said earlier on, the function of Kenya Power is purely distribution to the consumer. And they do that at a, at a, at a, at a, at a tariff or a levy over and above the cost of the energy that they're getting from the producer. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a markup cost. Mm. And then the, it is very easy to establish what the overhead uh, for running that organization is. I know the current CEO of Kenya Power and Lighting. I went to university with him. He's a man of extremely high integrity. He's a, he's a very uh, fine gentleman. And I, I have no doubt about his integrity whatsoever. But uh, however, if you look at, for example, the 2017 um, 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 political mission that the government had to light up all the houses in, in rural Kenya, we haven't even seen a report. Well, are those are those bulbs? I mean, I don't know. Sapa, you yes, can tell us. <laughs> are those uh, mud huts that they were, you know, that the CS was going to and visiting and saying, okay, here we put in a mud hut into this uh, grandmother's house. I, I, I don't know who meets the cost of that energy. To the best of my knowledge, I mm. think for that entire 2017, a big part of that cost was uh, borne by Kenya Power on behalf of government. And you see, when you carry forward this, then it explains that 35 billion that we are talking about. There's also been the historical procurement inefficiencies. There's also been the IPP, the cost of the energy from the IPPs that they that were very, very skewed in favor of the IPPs, and that was for for standby um, redundancy um, from the main producers. So there are all these historical issues that Kenya Power has suffered from. In my opinion, I believe that Kenya Power is a, is a viable concern, mm -hmm. and um, it should be re-engineered and just to be given and put on a much stronger. Um, governance uh, um, foundation order for it to deliver to its uh, shareholders. Right, you talked about, okay. Uh. <coughs> now, now, you know you're asking a very interesting question. A few years ago, maybe quite a number of years ago, I applied for a telephone line from Telecom and I waited for three years. But when Safaricom and Airtel <laughs> were licensed, those guys came hawking a physical phone to my, to my house. Like, can you bring, get a fixed rank? And that clearly shows you the power of competition. So if you want K Kenya Power to stop reporting losses, give it competition. All monopolies are very likely to experience inefficiencies because you know you'll get money. And uh, like a very good example I'll give you. Some of you here, you have been overbuilt by Kenya Power. And you complain. So what do they tell you? Ripa Kwanza? And then we discuss after that. I don't know. You know that's the end of the story. <laughs> but if you had a choice, you would go and say, okay, it's a ripper this time, but I will go somewhere else. So as long as there's no competition, you are going to have a problem with efficiencies. And that's why I agree with my colleague and other colleague here. Let's have competition in generation, which I think is quite competitive because we have a lot of power producers. Let's have competition in transmission. And let's have competition in distribution. All those facets of power are not that complicated. Nobody said they must be done by monopolies. There can be competition. Other countries have done it. And why can't we do that? And I need to make one more comment about quality control. I think you are right. Let's have quality control of the panels. Kenya, Kenya Bureau of Standards is there. So that we get quality panels that can last for a long time. That, so that we don't have people dumping solar panels here. Mm -hmm. And finally, my colleague talked about thinking outside the box. Maybe we should think without the box. For example, why do you have to struggle to get connected to power yeah. when you'll be paying them power for the next for the rest of your life? Yeah. In fact, in some countries, I remember visiting and I was given a free phone. Mm -hmm. The company gives you a free phone. Because mm -hmm. they are saying, if I give you this free phone, you'll be paying us services every month for the next several years. So if we thought long term, some of the problems with Kenya power would be sorted out mm -hmm. instead of thinking short term. All right. No, still on Kenya Power. Kenya Power says consumers will save 2 billion shillings every year through a donor-funded uh, program that seeks to retrofit expensive fuel off-grid stations with solar panels. The utilities managing director, Joseph Siror, says the stations will utilize solar power during the day and only use fuel when the sun sets. He says this will lead to lower electricity prices for consumers because they will pay less for fuel needed to run the off-grid stations. Uh, he also continued to say that the program seeks to, to hybridize dozens of off-grid stations that currently run on diesel with solar PV systems. Kenya Power operates and uh, maintains 56 off-grid stations out of which 30 are thermal and 26 are solar mini-grids. The cost of buying diesels 
or diesel, I should say, to run these thermal stations is included in the electricity bill footed by all consumers. The utility wants to retrofit 18 of the 30 thermal stations with solar so that the stations can produce power using both sources to make the generation not only cleaner but also cheaper. The company says it has already retrofitted four off-grid stations that have been using fuel with solar as part of a shift to renewable energy. Upon completion of the project, it is anticipated that fuel consumption at these sites will decrease by 60%, lowering the carbon uh, footprint. And I wanted just to pick the brains of uh, Kipron Kitoni. You talk about Kenjen and with the Green Park. I think this should have happened like yesterday with Kenya Power. Um, this is coming late into the day when they are trying to retrofit this so that at least we have a hybrid system there. Yeah, I, but it's, um, you know, God's timing is the best timing. I mean, this, these are things that should have been done a long time ago. And I think that uh, what Kenyan is doing is really remarkable. And, um, you know, onto the benefits of being a publicly listed company, I mean, we've seen this uh, evidently this manifested in Kenyan itself. If you look at the financials of Kenyan, you wouldn't think it's a state owned or it's a company in which the state still has a significant um, interest in. And that is the argument we've been making to government, that if you bring more companies to the market, as we have seen Kenjin, um, you know, as an active participant in our, in our exchange, then you will see less uh, expediency, less uh, interference. And uh, I just wanted to conclude by saying that I completely agree with uh, Mr. Iraqi here that, uh, you know, it's, we should be past the stage where politicians say that we are going to connect you to power as a favor. In fact, it is you the consumer who should be doing them a favor by joining onto their networks because you see if you can get your own source power i mean today we've seen the chinese come up with very robust very indians as well come up with very robust uh, solar solutions for homes so if everybody ascribes to that what happens to all these uh, big uh, enterprises that have been created to do that exact role, that play that exact role so we really need to figure out the long-term solution and i think for me the most important thing is that that prediction that 2027 will see the possibility of um, demand exceeds supply should not happen. I, I have been in South Africa recently and it's a big disaster. I mean, the, <laughs> I mean, if you have 10 hours of uh, power outage per day, up to 10 hours, I mean, it's, it, is, uh, it is really not acceptable. Mm -hmm. sure. uh, I, as South African visited me recently, yeah. <clears throat> and I remember she had an app that tells you when there will be power outage. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't want to get to that stage. Oh, we're but but I'm we, very happy. With but we were there. Yeah, but I'm happy with what you have said. Eh? That Kenya Power has realized that if you cannot beat them, you join them through solar power. Uh, I remember when uh, M-Pesa came, banks were up in arms because they realized M-Pesa is going to threaten them. But when I saw M-Pesa agents in banks, I knew they had won, and Kenya Power should do the same. Mm -hmm. Let's, if Kenya, if the, so, the future is, is solar, join them, don't beat them. Indeed. Bunyasi Sako. Well, uh, I think it's a this, this should have happened uh, way long, <laughs> long ago. Yeah, yeah. I think we have we have frustrated uh, the evolution of the power sector through this uh, uh, public interest. I'm not public in the same sense as uh, uh, that Prona is working with, but let's say government uh, interest in the power sector hasn't always worked in the interest of the of the of, of the market. It's worked. In the interest of, um, I think, uh, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to give it a name, but, uh, with a capital name to it, just simply to say vested interests into it. I think that is something we really must get out of. Uh, we have no reason to act as if we act protectively. And they sometimes might, they might even say this is a security sector, uh, government must get involved, but it's only in there because they are uh, cornering off the market for some to make huge sums, huge sums of money. South Africa is interesting now that South Africa is in the headlines for inadequate power supply, for market inefficiencies and so on. I remember prior to the 1994 elections and so on, uh, when the, the apartheid regime would supply power to target groups at all costs. And uh, their subsidies were huge but hidden. You know, um, SASCOM was one of those uh, well, the face of it looked like an ultra modern corporation that was well run, blah, blah, blah. It was all hollow on the inside. Mm -hmm. uh, so you do need to get reforms that relate to the, the market uh, realities of that particular market. Um, open up the costs, subject them. If that's the case, let it be an explicit discussion of what it might be. 
and allow the profit-making centers to be able to offset perhaps the loss-making uh, centers until you get to, to uh, I've used this word this week too many times, an equilibrium level that we may mm -hmm. think is, 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 is an, uh, we can begin to optimize if that's the case. But as it is now, I think there is uh, uh, too much, too many cells of knowledge and ignorance you know, coexisting beside each other. I think that we really need to get rid of. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's just finish up with the power. Uh, if we can just go back to uh, the Kenjin. Uh, because I think the, you had actually talked about Kenjin. And now Kenjin is targeting to generate electricity from geothermal brine. The hot, salty water pumped from underground to the surface and converted to a gas that turns turbine to generate er er electricity. Presently, most of this brine is reinjected into the earth reservoirs in Kenjin's geothermal fields to generate more steam to run uh, turbines. Instead of channeling the brine directly back into the earth, it can be directed through turbines to generate power and supplement what is generated through steam passing through turbines. Uh, this is according to the officials of Kenya. Kenya's largest uh, power producer says it generates 4,000 tons of brine per hour and reinjects it into the 180 wells of Olkaria in Naivasha. The farm has now commissioned a feasibility study on the possibility of generating power from brine to complement steam. If successful, it means the company will increase its generation capacity by producing power from geothermal steam and brine without needing to drill new wells, which is expensive. The company's strategy is to increase its generation capacity through renewable energy resources. And uh, I, I wanted just to also pick you the brains of Ketoni on this. Uh, we've been grappling with the issue of fertilizer. I think also <laughs> <laughs> Kenjin had uh, indicated that they could also use some of this right. geothermal waste to generate fertilizer. Now that we have our, our brain as well, uh, this I think also is coming late into the day, uh, if you may say. The ball, I, um, I, I think somewhere in the Bible it says that uh, a prophet is not honored at all, honored in his own home. <laughs> Uh, but I think the, the, the innovative credentials of uh, Kenjin are not new. Um, if we look at that company right from 15 or 20 years ago, I remember under the leadership of Edin Jorogi, for example, Kenjin became the first company on the planet to deploy wellhead technology commercially. They got a technology from Iceland and deployed it uh, in, the, in the production of uh, geothermal energy resource. Today they're working on the brine uh, reinfusion, which is another innovative step that they have taken. If you go to the Green Energy Park at uh, Olkaria, you will even see the help, uh, the spa that they have created, which shows and which attracts a lot of people during the weekends um, because of the health benefits that you get from um, using the waters of the, the spa that are is another byproduct of the, the wells. Um, I. I'm greatly impressed myself by the, 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 the very, very progressive leadership that Kenjin has attracted over the years. And again, I say it is because they are listed and they also go through very competitive processes in recruitment. Kenjin has um, also over the years been able to, to develop its engineering resources to a point where we are actually, they actually offer consulting services. I do believe that it is in... Um, the island. What's the island? What's the island next to Ethiopia called? Uh, um, island. The, com the country next to Ethiopia with Eritrea. 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 Yeah. Kenjin has been uh, given a consulting project in Eritrea to develop some of their resources. Same thing that they're doing in Ethiopia. So it is a company that is no longer a Kenyan company, but it is becoming a Pan-African leader in energy uh, production. And I think that um, for me, it's a good example of what a well-governed. Um, company can do in this economy, notwithstanding the fact that the government is a key actor. Should, you, should, should we also try and encourage them to continue with uh, their quest to make sure that they generate also or manufacture a fertilizer? I in think so. In light of where yeah, we are I with mean, the fake fertilizer because... I, I think for me that they need to continue their innovative uh, journey and they need to also look at how they can uh, um, register their own intellectual property because there's many things that they do 
of which they are fast in market. So as a country, I think one of the things that we have not been very, very focused on is, by, is actually ensuring that we safeguard the knowledge that comes out of our own innovative uh, thought process. Um, again, like I was, I've, we've talked about agriculture many times, one of the biggest things about Kenya is that we are very, very lazy in research and development. We actually don't focus on it at all. And the few, um, India, I don't know whether you're aware that India, the IIT, Indian Institute of Technology, mm -hmm. today is the leading institute globally, ahead of even the Massachusetts, uh, MIT and others, mm -hmm. in terms of registration of intellectual property. So companies like Kenyan could be at the forefront of that journey. Mm -hmm. All right. I think that has touched me. So it has touched you. Yes, it has touched me because I, <laughs> last uh, two weeks ago I was talking to the chair of um, the Kenya National Research Fund and I was asking what percentage of our GDP goes to research and development. And he told me 0.7 percent of the GDP. If you go to other countries, it's about 4 percent. So we still don't put, I agree with him, we don't have enough emphasis on R&D and that's how you come up with innovations. But back to Kenyan. I think beyond uh, the spa, Kenyan should also be making some money from tourism. I know yeah. all Korea is within a national park. But if you go there, you don't just see the, the wells, but the place is spectacular and beautiful. Yeah, it is. And I don't see Kenya, Kenyan telling us, can you come and see our beautiful, not just the, beauty, the big five, but also power generation in a very unique environment. The issue of brain, re-injecting brain into, in using brain, which instead of injecting it to use for generation power, is actually a very simple concept, but very powerful. And uh, the way best way to, to demonstrate it is, I don't know what type of a car you drive, but a lot of cars are turbocharged. So the exhaust from the car, instead of wasting it, they use it to, to develop, to, to get more power for the car. And that's the same concept. And I'm very happy to see that Kenyan is really leveraging on innovation. I think they're also trying to introduce some detergent from brine and so on, mm -hmm. that can be used for cleaning and for servicing their machines and so on. So. The most important thing is, can we do, is before we go and, f before we go beyond our house, can we see what we can do with what we have? And that should not just be for Kenyan, but, but for other companies. Finally, the paradox that has been uh, turning my head around, uh, Kenya, pa Ken Kenya power is listed. <laughs> so why has it not been behaving like Kenya, like Kenya and other listed companies? Why has it not been innovative? What is the missing link? And I think that the paradox we should focus on, because, the Isn't last the, mon the monopoly syndrome the I, I proper, probably so because the dream of any company is to be listed so that we see efficiencies we see, we see more profitability but there's a company that has been listed but it has not behaved like a company that has been listed so what is the missing link <laughs> you, <laughs> support, you know when you're, when you're mentioning about a listing i wonder I, is, I know kenya power is listed, it's listed. But, but how come you know there's no stimulation that we can see from uh nsc as far as uh, kenya power is concerned i was a bit conflicted on that but yeah. we want to take a short break when we come back we want to see also the activity at uh, the ruby security exchange with the latest development as well and since the installation of the incubator that is the ibuka incubator how far has it made traction in terms of attracting also you know the lower cadre sort of speaker uh, funds that can graduate now to be listed. Only Homeboys has been listed so far. Uh, we want to hear from also the chair what is happening on that particular front. Now that the shilling has gone down also, a uh, lot of activities uh, is looking good. Uh, we can say there is optimism and uh, it, we are very sanguine that activities at the NSC are looking good. We take a short break. Don't go away.